until Friday. <laughs> we're still looking the same as we had for since quarter to eight. It is now three o'clock in the afternoon. And I finally arrive at the first desk. There's a sergeant sitting there. He's in the, you know, in uniform. Just give me your papers. Hand your papers face up. All right, you meds, give it to us face up. Don't wrinkle your papers. Put them down on the desk. And when I call your name, move on to my right. Rupus Appleby. He's got Rupus Appleby's paper. Rufus says, yeah. He's already in the Army. Roof moves on. Shepard J.P. Yep. I move on. I figured I'm making it, see? He gives me my paper back, which, you know, I'd give it to him. He gives it back. This time he's clipped five other papers to it. So we move like a snail around the next corner. And now there's three guys sitting there in a row, three guys in, in brown suits. First one is a PFC. And he takes each paper and he says, Appleby, Roof. That's all he does. He hits it. Passes it to the next guy. Shepard, J.P., Passes to the next guy. Next guy takes a look at my paper. Shepard J.P. He's, you know, he hits it about three times. It's getting louder and louder, boy, them hits. Now we get to the next guy. There's three guys, see, and he's got a great big stamp. And he says, Rupus Appleby? Rupa, yeah. And he goes, he goes, he goes. He stamps my paper, and we, you know, this is all, all they're doing. They're not examining us one bit. You know, they're like they're examining our papers. Finally, we go up another long flight of stairs, and here it comes. We're getting right down to the, you know, this is really where it's really happening because I see stretching ahead of me now a line of guys that are as well there as. A jaybird stark naked as a man can conceivably be. And as we get inside, in, in, just inside this room, they hand us a basket, a big basket, you know, like the kind you get in the supermarket. The guy's sitting there and he says, Strip all the way down, put all your clothing in the basket. Would you please fold your clothing this way so that it will fit in the basket? It will be folded this way. Fold your trousers this way, fold your pants this way, put your underwear over here. I want you to put your shoes on top. You will carry your basket, and you will keep your papers in your left hand. Are there any questions? Uh, you know, I mean, I've undressed myself pretty well, you know, up to this point, so you don't ask them how you untie your shoes, although I'm sure that some guys did say, I don't know how to work the buttons yet, you know. The guys were using every conceivable way to stay out. You know, I can't dress myself. How can I go across, you know, <laughs> if I can't dress myself? So anyway, you know, I take my clothes off. Rufus takes his clothes off, you know, it's very easy when you're wearing overalls, you know, a work shirt. That's all Rufus wore. He came with absolutely nothing, because he had heard already, you know, don't bring no clothes, just wear nothing. And he had nothing. He just zap, pow, off comes the shirt, off comes the overalls. He takes off his big clod hoppers, no socks, into the basket. There he is. Absolutely. You can see little ears of corn sticking out of them all over you know, <laughs> your old roof, you know. So I, I take off my stuff, and, uh, and I'm not used to this yet, you know. I don't think there's any way to strip a man quicker of his dignity than to strip him of everything he's got on and put him in with 500 million other people. Boy, if you think you're an individual, that's the quickest way to lose it. And so, you know, that's why, you know, so many people make such a big fetish today about clothing. You know, clothing is kind of a, it, it makes everybody look different from everybody else. So I take my clothes, I put it in the basket, and so we start moving forward. Now, this sounds like a joke, but this is exactly what happened. First guy says, uh, put your left hand over your left eye, read the chart. Well, the chart's about, you know, six inches from me. I says, uh, A-L-D-F-G-H-O-P-Q-L-O. Ah, it's okay. Put your right hand over your right eye, read the chart. A-L-P-C-L-D-L-Q. Okay, next man. He's stamping a thing, see? Boom, boom, boom. My paper's got butt dents and stamps and things hanging up. So I get to the next guy. This is actually what happened. The next guy says, uh, When you were a child, did you have any communicable diseases which could have caused the repercussions in the later life? Yes or no? Uh, what? No. All right, thank you very much. Uh, open your mouth, please. Stick your tongue out and say, ah. Uh, uh, I don't know what the hell he's stamping there. You know, he says, tongue, okay. You know, he's got a thing. So he says, uh, please stand up now and uh, let me see your legs. Uh, so put your knee up on this desk. 
And then he takes a little hammer. Pow! My leg flies up. My leg was a fink. It got me in the army. It worked. You know, he hit me and zip. It jumps up like that. He says, okay. Me and Roof move on. Now, this is the last moment. Now, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Roof sits down. He says, sit down, please. Chair here. Here's another guy. He's a captain. Full captain. You know, he looked like a weasel. And I sit down. I'm on the other chair, see, waiting in my turn. Rufus sits in the chair, and he says something to Rufus. Rufus turned and says, what do you mean? And he says, okay. He stamps, and Ruf gets up, looks back, and walks into the next room. So I say, what the hell? What do you ask Ruf? So I, I move up into the chair. It's now my turn. You want to hear my complete psychological examination? Okay. Uh, he's not even looking at me. He's got the paper, see. He's reading my paper, turns it over, glances up through his horn room glasses. You like girls? I said, well, it depends on what girl, you know. There's a lot of girls I don't like. A lot of girls I like, you know. Well, estrogen. Stamp, okay. <laughs> Next thing out, I go. <laughs> That's it, man. So I go into the next room, and here we are now. There's a whole, you know, the, the, it seems like the line is now in a, in a kind of a, well, actually, it's like, like Mammoth Cave in the middle of this building. They have a bare room, and all of us guys are standing around. The, whole, the line is backing up, see? There's no way to get out of this one. There's no door on the other end, and there's just the PFC sitting over there watching the crowd. See, he's not saying nothing. He's just sitting there. And when the, when the, when the room was filled, absolutely packed, he went over and he closed the door. And he hollered something out. Oh, I just met all, all set there. Tell, uh, tell uh, Captain Johnson that uh, it'll be just a couple seconds now. Okay. And he closes the door. He says, oh, I want all the papers. Pass all them papers up here to the first on the desk here now. Let's have all the papers. So we start handing the papers. All of us are standing jaybird naked, holding a basket of our clothing in our hand, you see. And so there must have been about 300 guys in this room, all, you know, jammed in together, kind of embarrassed, you know, all standing in there, and, and the, everybody's kind of sweaty. We've been in line now. now the time, incidentally, in case you're curious, is now quarter to five. We've been standing in line since about, well, quarter to eight. And now this is the payoff. And we're in this room. It's all locked up. And all around the room, I can see calendars. You know, it shows guys with bayonets and stuff. It says, the Army loves you. Stuff like, uh, you... The Army is a crack outfit. Be a man. Be in the Army. So uh, we're standing. And just in this, nobody knows what's going to happen. See, we've all handed our papers, and he takes them all, and he takes this big pile of papers. He's got them all on the desk. Here he's going for me, so I'm just... He's rustling these papers. Absolutely no look on his face. Completely. He's like a monolith. He goes through the papers, puts them in a great big yellow folder, just a big yellow folder, and then he's got a stamp, which he goes... Bang, bang. He's stamping a folder now. You notice it's getting less and less and less personal? He's now stamping a folder. He doesn't even stamp our papers no more. So he's just stamping a folder. So we are now already in the folder. So he then picks up his little intercom phone, and he says, uh, Tell Captain Johnson it's uh, all set in here now. Yeah. Uh, tell him it's number, lot number 379J. Yeah, okay. Hangs up the phone. He sits there. Just looks at us. No look on his face any more than, you know, some guy at the pet store is looking at a new shipment of canaries. He just got a look, you know, just sitting there looking. All of a sudden, the door opens, and with that, the PFC jumps up and he hollers, Attention! All you guys, attention! Pull in your gut. Stand at attention. Captain Johnson? Are you all set? And Captain Johnson says, yes, sir. Captain Johnson walks to the middle of the room amid 5,000 guys, and he says the following line. All of you please raise your right hand. I always associate the Army with the endless rattling of papers. Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I hereby swear to protect the Constitution and as a member of the armed forces, blah, 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 in hoc agriculus conch, e pluribus unum. So help me God. We all raise our hand. I do. You are all now members of the armed forces of the United States. Congratulations. <laughs> 